Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. We're at VMworld 2015, and one of the big subjects here at VMworld 2015 is infrastructure. We have a data center that's under the process of evolution. We've got core technology like uh, fiber channel and things like that, and legacy applications that need that infrastructure, but we're also evolving to a more IP storage based reality. Joining me on the whiteboard, I've asked Saptarshi Sengupta, Senior Product Marketing Manager at Cisco, to walk us through this uh, situation. So give us an idea of what we're looking at here. So what we're looking at, George, is how the entire data center storage area networking mainly, like storage part and storage networking part is right. evolving over time. Okay. So what I have shown is like the three, we call the three pillars at Cisco. Okay. Three pillars of the storage, evolution of storage networking space. Okay, so this is so like our core fabric area, This right? is our core fabric area. This, what we have seen for the past many years, like 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. This is what SAN is, storage area networking is. Right. In this particular case, and this is mainly related to enterprise apps like VDI, OLTP, the online right. uh, transaction processing and things like that. So in this particular pillar, what happens is that storage is at the back end, right. back, and at the front end is the servers, right. what we call initiator and targets, yep. and the storage networking switches sit here. That creates the fabric. And we're seeing, obviously, you know, even evolution within this, right, with the advent of flash, and we need uh, faster fabric and 16 gigs and things Perfect. like that, right? Perfect. It's not only faster fabric. I mean, I will talk about our 16 gig fabric that we just launched, the okay. fabric switch. Okay. But another thing what we see is that not only 16 gig, but the port density is increasing. Because of all these all flash arrays and everything, now people cannot live with like smaller port densities that we saw in the past. So now the port density and 16 gig, I mean the speed is increasing. And, and is that mostly a data center footprint uh, capabilities or you want to just take up less space in the data so center? So one is data center footprint. Second thing is that people are trying to consolidate. Like people who had two or three data centers in every, different places, what they're trying to do is consolidate everything in one large data center. And that is calling for all these high density switches. That That's makes what sense. Thing. Well, talk about a little bit of what you guys are doing there. So, in the past, what we have done is we had 9148, and that is an 8 gig switch for mm -hmm. us. In recent times, like two years back approximately, we launched 9148S, S stands for 16. So, this is a 16 gig switch, okay. but these are 48, both are 48 port switches. Okay. What we have done is that recently we launched 9396S, which is again 16 gig switch, mm -hmm. but now we also have a 96 port switch. Okay, that's part of your higher density you're talking about. That is the part of the higher density we are talking about. Okay. And that has all the classic features that Cisco has brought to market as the industry leader, which is like vSAN, virtual SAN, right. IVR, interface and routing. Mm -hmm. It has TrustSec. Uh, so all sorts of great features that Cisco has already brought earlier right. is packed into this switch and now it has higher density uh, switching. So that is a great thing that we recently did. And is that a, that's, so that's a top of a uh, rack switch? Th this is, so here is a subtle difference between 9148S and 9396S. What okay. happens is that most of the time you will see on top of a rack, you can only connect 48 ports. Now two racks makes it 96 ports, right? Sure. So, when 9396S is deployed, what we are expecting is that they will be deployed as a middle of uh, okay. row switch. So what will happen is that there are racks like this, sure. and two racks side by side will be connected to one 9396S That switch. makes sense. Okay. So that, that could make a big, big difference on a row. You could cut down in almost in half the number of switches Correct. you need. From management standpoint, think about managing two switches versus one switch. Sure. Now your footprint is less and you are managing less number of switches, less headache for IT administration. Okay. And plus, we have another switch I just want to touch upon that people already know about. It is 9250i. This is a backup disaster recovery type of switch, classical example of that. So it has 20 fiber channel ports, then it has uh, IP ports like FCI for FCIP, and then it has FCOE, fiber channel over Ethernet, where Cisco is the major player in okay. that. Okay, so like a SAN Cisco. extension type a of a... SAN extension, exactly okay. correct. So let's talk about some of this new uh, thing that's going on with uh, iSCSI and NAS and IP storage. Absolutely, so uh, as we see, I mean, because of lesser cost, uh, lesser cost to uh, buy the product and implement it. I mean, LAN is a huge industry, mm -hmm. and what we are seeing is that for big data, NAS, iSCSI type of implementation, people are going more on the Ethernet side 
than the pure play fiber channel sure. side. Especially and for like next generation applications and things like that, absolutely right? Absolutely correct. So yeah. that is why, I mean, I wanted to write down the big data part here. So wherever there is big data analytics, what is happening is that people now try to have l lower and more deterministic latency. Mm -hmm. So the storage piece and the uh, switch piece, we are trying to put it in a leaf spine type of architecture. You probably have heard of that sure. earlier. Yep. So now what we are doing is that we have already had a FCOE play. Mm -hmm. I mean, we used to put our FCOE modules in the Nexus switches earlier, sure. and it had 10 gig uh, FCOE. Right. Now, in the recent launch where we launched 9396S, we mm -hmm. also launched a uh, fabric module, which is 40 gig FCOE, because people are going higher and higher in speed, sure. right? Yep. So now we have a 40 gig module that goes into Nexus 7000 series okay. and Nexus 7700 series. Okay. And these are 40 gig FCOE. Okay. So, so very high performance, very high bandwidth. Very high performance, very high bandwidth. If you think really think about the bandwidth, like the 8 gig fiber channel, from that it is like mini X jump. From 16 gig fiber channel, it is 3x the performance, 40 gig FCOE. Okay. And from when the 32 gig fiber channel comes, which we all know in the com will come in the next year or two, right. it still will have one and a half x of performance sure. advantage. So, so what are some of the use cases for 40 gig uh, connectivity that you're seeing right now? So what we see is that, I mean, People are trying to figure out a few things still, like 10 gig FCOE and 16 gig is good enough, right? because the initiators and targets, they have to also come to that speed. When we talk about HBA, HBAs sure. have to have that type of uh, capabilities. Right. So we are still trying to figure out exactly when the industry will really be ready. So there are some connections which are 10 gig FCOE, some connections which are 40 gig FCOE. But we are, what we also do is we talk about the unified ports and FCOE end-to-end -end FCOE. Okay. So what, by FCOE, what we are trying to do is that earlier in hand, like the LAN and SAN used to be very different. Like starting from cabling to oh, yeah. everything, sure. like putting some switches that used to have two different branches. So there is loss, lots and lots of cost associated. Sure. Now what we are trying to do is we are wording it in such a way that FCOE branches out on the LAN side where it's pure Ethernet and the FCOE goes towards the target side, which is the SAN side. So basically we are cutting down on expenses and minimizing the management, minimizing the operational expenses and everything. Okay. So that's what we're trying to do. So w one more thing on the NAS side of things that I wanted to touch upon is that I am not going to draw that figure here, but what is happening is that you can have now 10 gig and 40 gig FCOE connectivity from the initiator as we call it, mm -hmm. and then it can branch out to 40 gig FCOE or Ethernet world on the left hand side, wherever your LAN side is, and on the right hand side, which is like your SAN side and fiber channel play, now you can have FCOE connectivity to the storage side of the things. So, so it just gives you a lot of flexibility for lots future. Lots of flexibility and lots of features there. Okay. So let's talk about this third area here, the cloud. What do you guys have playing there? So. We are not yet playing there. What okay. we see is that uh, in the cloud space, basically mobile connectivity mm -hmm. to this uh, private cloud or public cloud, whatever it is, there is a lot of work going on. For the 9250i, it has a very good play in there because okay. it is for SAN extension capability. So sure. that definitely will play a major role. But there is a lot of REST-based API play there. And we are trying to think about that and see what we'll do in the future. So once again, you're sort of laying the groundwork for whatever comes next. Whatever comes next. But our main focus is this first bucket and the second bucket. Yeah, the, the core fabric the and, core fabric uh, and uh, FCO, IP, IP based storage. Great stuff. Well, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks today. for having me here, George. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.